uh, some of the drivers are in trouble and looking back down and they're actually starting on the yellow and this is not going to count this is not going to count they're going to have to hold uh, their positions here um, it's an interrupted procedure basically uh, they're going to have to come round again Jamie, in, in sequence here the drivers having problems by the way were uh, Monfardini and uh, Viso waving I think Viso has got underway but Monfardini has been passed by the back car and I think that's the end of his race yeah well the problem is as well is when you have this situation no, none of them have got going at the yeah, moment you're right um, I mean they're, they're you know they're not going to be able to get going now they'll have to go and push it into the pits and uh, probably have to start the race from there if they can get the car started well that's an absolute nightmare for the pair of them and uh, we'll just have to see whether they can actually get it going and get back into this one but um, there have been troubles right the way through this series and it, it's been the management control of, of the vehicles anti-stall device which has caused all kinds of problems and it looks like it may well have uh, just reared its head again Jim yeah it's unfortunate for these guys um, it's it's to miss the Monaco race you know it's 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 a disaster for them so they're not going to be very happy um, it's it's a big shame and uh, you know let's hope that they can get the car started and uh, you know maybe they can come out in the back of the field and uh, rejoin the race and see what they can do so the rest of the field are actually going round uh, once again and um, um, just having a, a quick spin down and Vito was uh, leading off um, row eight alongside uh, Lauda, Matthias Lauda, uh, son of Nicky Lauda of course, came to racing a little bit late and uh, Monfordini, he was uh, leading off row um, seven uh, for Durango, um, a nightmare for them, uh, probably only beaten by the high-tech PK sports boys who've got uh, Nagaro and PK right at the, the back of this after PK's uh, suspension trouble. It's, it's a tough place this, it's always tough when it comes to strategy as you care to uh, adopt it. So on their marks, the light boards is all lit up. Let's go racing here. Underway, nice and tidily. Oh, and that's uh, another problem as well. I think it's Pantano in difficulty. And they, everyone has gone clean and past him, thank goodness. And Coval Island's got an absolutely brilliant start here. He's slotted in nicely in front of Bruni. Everybody else is side by side. And we're underway, Jamie. Thank goodness, as they start the rise here at Monte Carlo. We are underway. This one will count. And despite the stoppers there on that... Oh, it's Blar as well. And that's a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. The yellows are flying, but we are racing nonetheless. Yeah, it's always a big worry, you know, at the beginning of Monaco race, it's, uh, it's so tight. Uh, anybody, if they make a very slight mistake, it can cause a, a big problem, obviously, with the rest of the pack. So, uh, all cleaning through there at the beginning of the start of the race. Though. Absolutely wonderful. It's a Formula One, and he could be the boy, couldn't he? Quite possibly, yeah. He's had a good run so far this season, and uh, he's right out there in the championship. And again, in this race, he's looking uh, very strong. Um, good qualifying, and, uh, you know, who knows what can happen. And uh, one of the uh, Capus racing machines is going uh, a little bit straight, and uh, uh, looks like maybe a, 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 a little bit damaged as well. And uh, uh, Bruce Alvarez just getting into the barriers as uh, we get on board once again uh, through this uh, majestic scenery. Like, uh, they may well try and choose to, to change just the rear tyres of the car to, to try and produce more traction, because... Uh, this is what this circuit's all about. And I think that's uh, another dance car stuck uh, at the side of the lead. It's the 14 of Mario Lopez. And uh, well, the weekend uh, just gets more and more difficult for so many here. It really does take it out on these cars. Fabulous machines and a real howl from them as well. Great polonaise and uh, good chef. And uh, it's doing a good job on Monaco driving as well at the moment. That's the PK Junior uh, just moving up a spot here. He's uh, starting way on the back and uh, helps uh, Hernandez and Compass Racing uh, out of the way there. And uh, on board uh, with him. Um, close. Nice effort. He, uh, he got it right, he took the gamble and it paid off. And uh, it's not a spot that you would normally overtake. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's tricky, but uh, it either, for sure, it's, it's certainly a great uh, training ground. Oh, and, uh, and that looks like uh, Piccioni uh, gone off uh, just into the barriers. It is, indeed, the Durango driver. I was just about to say, Adam Carroll is really keeping, uh, giving Bruni honest here. Uh, maybe I think it's the pressure that Carroll's putting on him that uh, is causing the difficulty to go over line. And uh, basically, he's escaping from Piccioni. Where did it go wrong? Well, he just used far too much curve there. Put the uh, put the belly of the car over the curves, and it just launched it, basically. And uh, once that happens, you're, you're history. You know, you haven't got any control on the steering of the car. And, uh, the the I want a very well-placed trains that they have all around the Monagas circuit. Uh, we've seen this so often. Two points at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that beautiful shot of Artam just uh, losing the back end, uh, getting it a little bit wrong and uh, hitting those brakes. And uh, Red Bull gives you wings, they say. But well, you certainly need a rear wing here, uh, especially in some of the tiny sections. going light as he's going through the left-hand corner and he's just getting on the brakes at the same time and uh, all of the drivers are aware of the yellow line they, they know it's there and uh, it's the bus to keep inside it so uh, you know you have to just 
just concentrate when you exit the pits and uh, make sure you don't cross it. Our leader is in, Kovalainen pits off the lead. Adam Carroll incidentally came out uh, and he is rejoined in sixth spot. Bartam also came out, came in around about the same time and finished 13th. Uh, in, uh, what are you spotted him? I was just looking at the front right tyre actually and uh, looking like they may have a problem on the front left there as they're doing the change. But well, I was looking this like, is an absolute is nightmare for Kovalainen. Um, and look at the frantic oh. looks upon the face of the air jack man here. Oh, nightmare cool. time. And Kovalainen's hands go up. And uh, this is absolutely a... Well, what can you say? Um, where will he come out? It's anybody's guess. They're working on it now. And I think they've just about got it. It makes you wonder where he doesn't just uh, go back out, perhaps. Is he sure? Is that what's happened? Yeah. There's, the, there's the nuts. They decide, they're changing the other side now. They've obviously decided that uh, Just to they're going to change the front right and leave it on, yeah. Yeah. I think they've actually put uh, oh, back on time ticking away. an equally warm tyre as well, um, uh, certainly a scuff tyre. And uh, this is going to be a real test for Kovalainen because he is off the jacks and away he goes and um, almost stalls it on exit as well. Certainly does That's and sorted. gets help to get away. Well, you can't really blame the man himself. Finished it. What on earth's gone wrong? And it looks like it might be uh, mechanical. Let's have a look. Can't uh, tell you anything from that. Here we are. This is the telltale. Big lockup. And uh, did he do it all himself? Yes, he did. Just overshot. Oh. There you go. Hugely lockup. And uh, well, the tyres were wanting to go one way, but unfortunately. Um, and then this. I uh, stalled, really possibly. Stalled. And uh, did he just give it up? It's gone. I think that was probably a classic case of watching in the mirrors as yep. he was coming down into the hairpin and uh, just seeing the other two cars behind. Just Our leader has uh, ha is coming to the pits. He was he had around about a 20-odd second lead uh, over Adam Carroll, who is now absolutely gunning it, trying to get back here. There he is. Just coming into the rust gas. So, let's just see when that yellow line starts to unfurl. It's going to be uh, close. This gonna is going to be very, very tight indeed. There's Bruni. There's Adam Carroll. Together. Oh! In fact, was it? Was it? I'm still holding my breath. Flashed by. I don't think it was. I think it was. He's made it. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> do, do forgive me if you're a uh, Rooney fans. Adam Garrell, fantastic. He was on an absolute flyer. Uh, through he came, and for a split second, I thought, oh my goodness, I've just fallen into the red car. <laughs> Absolute pandemonium and nightmarish, and uh, they look a right bunch of sockers as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is probably why Nicholas Lapierre. Let's see. Whoa! Did he? Didn't he? <laughs> oh, um, Hernandez uh, getting bullied uh, and harried, and uh, Lapierre just keeping it clean. I think they both got away with it. They were both pretty lucky then. I think they were. If uh, you intertwine the tyres, of course, one of you is going to get launched. Uh, I don't even know whether they actually had contact there. They both stood off each other. But it's Supernova International and uh, Adam Carroll out in front here. And he is on a parade here. Look at that. <laughs> I don't think it's quite that easy, but um, he's certainly doing a good job, that's for sure. Well, that is not the way that Nicholas Lapierre, uh, he's losing it somehow. I think suspension damage, uh, maybe, in qualifying, has just not been sorted out properly. He's certainly looking um, a little bit wild here. Uh, I think it's a, a locked wheel and an overshoot. No locked wheels. Uh, maybe there's a problem. Well, just Possibly from, uh, from the close uh, the close contact of the chicane on the lap before. Could well be. Um, and you can bounce um, basically wrongly over those chicanes and do all kinds of damage to the front end. And I think that's what's happened. Correct. Uh, to me, anyway, at least, looks to be expanding, and this sounds like trouble. And that's a real shame for Big Day Junior. He was uh, pushing extremely hard, he's going to try and keep this one safe, and I just hope there's no uh, fluids coming out the back of it. Uh, it sounds like you yeah, just certainly, certainly sounds uh, not very nice. <laughs> it certainly does not. Uh, transmission, I think. Yeah, we haven't got any oil on the circuit. He's holding it 
so well on Pell. Such a cool head on young shoulders. Amazing stuff. Oh, just as we said it, the rear end kicks out. He was juicing it up. He wanted that checkered flag. He takes it. Adam Carroll is victorious here. Congratulations. He's looked like one of the fastest all weekend. He finishes ahead of Rosberg with Scott Speed in fourth place. Kovalainen in fifth ahead of Matthias Lauda. Very good result for Matthias Lauda. After talking him down, uh, we salute him. Artam in seventh place. Hernandez and Pla. And then the rest of them uh, a, a good deal further back. And indeed on the lead lap, I think it was only the top five. Drivers' Championship looks like this. Would you like to talk us through it? <laughs> Well, see Karnik over there with 28 points, he's, he's got the lead now and uh, he regains, keeps the lead basically from the last race. Jimmy Bruno, he's, uh, he's coming in there in second position now, 26 points, I mean, great result there. And, Fantastic. And uh, Scott Speed in the frame and Adam Carroll. Yeah, exactly. um, Carroll on 23 points incidentally, Scott Speed on 25 with uh, Maria Lopez on uh, 17 and uh, some of the remainders there.